Well, welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone to another broadcast of Jim and Java. I'm always excited to be here to answer your fundraising questions. Uh, just always remember that uh, it's our goal and we strive to answer every fundraising question that you have out there. Certainly, if you've got unanswered questions, please put those in the comment section below. Uh, you can reach out to us on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And of course, if your question's a little bit more personal, then uh, go ahead and reach out to me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And uh, we've got some exciting questions today, so let's dive right in. Well, we've got some questions regarding a fundraising plan. And a fundraising plan is always so critical and so essential. So let's uh, answer that first question. The first question is from Maria in Sacramento, California. Maria asks, what are the key ingredients of a good fundraising plan? Well, Maria, once again, uh, I, I think it's so important for an organization uh, of any size, really, to do a fundraising plan. Uh, just as I believe it's critical and essential to an organization to do a strategic plan, to review that strategic plan as a board every year, I believe it's also important uh, whether you've got uh, got 10 development fundraising people on your staff or no development uh, staff, it's still important to create a fundraising plan. And I always start out, first of all, with what I refer to as a situational analysis. A situational analysis essentially highlights what are, what, in, in a sense, what kind of hand are we dealt? Um, do you have someone doing development? Uh, what are your development strategies? plans, your programs, what currently exist? Are you, are you doing, are you having an event? Are you doing efforts for major donors? I always focus, of course, in on our, our mass area, which generally includes the uh, 80% that brings in 20% of your dollars. Those are the mass donors. And within that area, it usually will include direct mail, newsletters, some kind of communication with people. Like to know does that exist? Number two, you know, what are we doing? Are we doing anything in the middle donor area? Um, that's generally individuals who've given from 1,000 to 499. And then what's going on in our major donor area? Are things happening with major donors? Do we have representatives who are meeting with people on a regular basis? And when I refer to major donors, that's generally five to 10,000 or five to 25,000, depending on your organization size. And then of course, are we doing anything with mega donors? And that uh, mega donors can be anywhere from 10,000 to $25,000 or more, depending on your organization. Uh, the organization that I work with, we generally will focus in on individuals of mega donors, $50,000 or more. And so, you know, are we, are you doing weekend events or are you doing dinners, banquets, other kind of activities for them? All those things are so important to know. Then you want to focus in on your future. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go from the future? Do you want to move from no development officers to one development officer or one person uh, doing fundraising to two people doing fundraising or more? Do you want to create an income thrust or strategy project or program manager? Do you want to create that? Do you want to have someone whose sole role or even a part-time role is to help do your events or do your individual vision dinner each year or do a walkathon, jogathon? It's important that you start to look at where do we want to be one year, three years, five years. Your first year, you may just decide we want to focus in on major donors and try and start a, a vision dinner. The next year or three years, we want to add one more event. So year one, year three, year five, we want to get to a point where we do a winter or a, sorry, a spring, a summer and a fall event might be a goal that you would have. If you aren't communicating, doing any direct mail, do you want to do two, three, five appeals a year if you don't do any yet? If you're currently doing a newsletter and you do it twice a year, uh, whether it be electronic or hard copy, 
do we want to increase the frequency of that move to quarterly sometimes maybe even move to monthly what are the things that you feel are important that you want to do and putting those goals out there and then what do you hope to accomplish with those particular areas are there goals if you do a vision dinner how many people and how much money do you hope to raise we see easily anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 to even uh, fifty thousand dollars per hundred people and so it's important to make sure that you focus in on what are those things that you want to accomplish so uh, you also want to make sure what do you want to do from an evaluation standpoint do you want to evaluate the performance of your operations and what are the measuring sticks what kind of performance do you have do you want to increase your donor base by X number um, this last year through direct mail the organization that uh, and the effort that I oversee we saw 14,000 new donors come in through direct mail very unusual uh, we you know there are times when we've been happy with four or five thousand new donors trying new name acquisition strategies this happened to be a year that we saw significant growth um, could be a lot of people were cooped up but it's important that you focus in on that so um, I hope Maria that that helped you in um, knowing understanding the importance of doing a fundraising plan and number two just what are the key elements the key steps of that and of course make sure that you involve your board make sure you involve your staff and make sure you involve volunteers and maybe even donors in the creation of that plan you want each to be owners in that strategy that's the only way it's going to be accomplished and the only way you're going to see success so i hope that helps maria well our last question is from sue in reston virginia and sue asked the question i'm new to fundraising and development what are some essentials that i need to learn well thanks sue i appreciate so much your question um, as someone who's been in fundraising and development for the last 38 years i can definitely tell you that if i had not had a firm foundation in the basics going all the way back to the 1980s, I'm not sure I would still be doing what I do today. I was introduced on my first day on the job to a set of articles, books, and in those days, cassette tapes that I was to just consume over the next uh, two weeks and then from there on a fairly regular basis, on a monthly basis, um, I was to um, be informed on the content of certain books, certain tapes, and, uh, and also I had the opportunity to attend conferences that were structured to the needs of nonprofit organizations like ours. So I had a great uh, foundation. I had mentors come alongside me who, um, who I just uh, respected and still continue to stay up with even uh, today so it's so important um, what I would recommend Sue first of all is I would understand the what I refer to as the uh, the umbrella of, of development that would be if you could picture a large umbrella and underneath that umbrella would be three areas the first would be public relations the second would be recruitment the third area would be fundraising those three areas are the really in a sense, a three-legged stool or those elements, those components under the development umbrella. Understanding that public relations is such an important part of development. Understanding that getting your message out to the community, to your audience, is vital to the success. You do not want to be one of the best kept secrets. Uh, like a lot of organizations feel. On the recruitment side of things, you need to understand that you have an opportunity when you work with partners to utilize those people in the area of development. They can not only be donors, they don't have to just be donors, they can also be volunteers to your organization. And I'll be talking in just a minute about an acrostic I refer to as life, which I believe is very important as well. The last area is that of fundraising. And it's important to understand that fundraising, and in fact, I've actually in so many ways, in so many areas, the way that I live my life, I've sort of changed my mindset almost from the idea of raising funds to raising friends. That even though that getting a gift from an individual is important, I also want to start with a genuine 
honest, real relationship with someone. I want to build a friendship with that person so that ultimately I can earn the right to ask that person for a gift. Um, you know, you don't just in the first day ask a good friend for a big favor the first time you meet someone. It generally takes a while to develop a relationship and it's exactly that way. Now I mentioned the acrostic life because I believe it's so important because you want to ultimately get to the point where you have partners who are partners with you for life. That's L being labor, I being influence, F being finances, E being expertise. Understanding the need for people's involvement with their labor. That's their time and that is a very valuable commodity in this day and age. Getting people to volunteer their time is important. Influence, you need them to introduce you to their friends and to represent the organization on your behalf. They don't have to do it officially. They don't even have to do it well. But if they can be a, a, a representative, the spokesperson and ambassador for your organization through, um, through representing who you are and what you do to their friends, that's going to be extremely valuable. Of course, from the finance side, I believe it's so important that you that a gift from an individual that is the first place to start I found that people don't you don't really get people's heart until you get a gift from them that's when their involvement really matters and then the E being expertise it's so important that expertise element in that is is extremely important in addition to that um, I like to focus in on a donor, mod, what I refer to as a donor model, uh, sometimes donor utilization model has been used. But in that model, I focus in on win, keep, and lift. If you can remember those three words, it's the, it summarizes the whole system of doing development properly. Winning people to your cause, and that's through a wide variety of ways. It could be going in and speaking to a civic organization or a church or sending someone a particular mailing. You could even rent a list. That's the win. The keeping is once someone gives a gift, it's ensuring that they give a second gift, a third gift, and more gifts and keeping them. And there's a wide variety, everything from vision dinners, small dinner parties, um, even direct mail letters and newsletters, all are part of building the relationship and keeping people. And of course, you never want to have someone locked in at the same level all the time in their giving. You want to look for individuals who also are trying to, that you're challenging them and giving them opportunities to give each time at a higher level of giving. Someone starts at $100, can you get them to $250? Then from $250 to $500, $500 to $1,000, $1,000 to $5,000, $5 to $10,000, and so on. You want to continue to provide opportunities for people for them to give at different levels. So uh, those are what I believe are, are some of the important essentials. Also remember that you will be, you know, are there particular strategies for the masses, you know, that 80% that brings in 20% of your dollars? Are you looking for a mid-level program? That's individuals who give from one to 499. Are you also looking for a major donor program, 5,000 and above, and then a mega donor program from 10 to 25,000 and above? Make sure that you have those. If you can understand those essentials, um, that, that, Sue, that really will get you started off on the, on the right foot. There's a number of great books that I recommend, and I'm going to be doing a video um, in the near future on what are some of the best uh, books to, to read. Um, Development 101 by John Frank is uh, just a, a tremendous book. Um, Donors of People Too by Tim Smith. Um, there's just a, a number of, of really great books out there, and uh, I'll do a video on that in the near future. So anyway, that concludes our broadcast. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Once again, if you've got questions or if this uh, video even brought up some new questions for you, put those in the comments section. Make sure that uh, you, um, if you liked what you heard, give it a thumbs up. We always would love to have more subscribers, individuals who love what we're doing and want to find out on a regular basis. Make sure you um, click that bell to be notified. A lot of times people forget that when they, surf, they subscribe. Uh, you can submit questions at... Uh, uh, development effectiveness m at gmail.com on twitter at devfstrats and use the hashtag jim and java so uh, on behalf of the development effectiveness strategies channel and jim and java i'm jim dempsey thanks a lot and we'll see you again next week take care bye bye